When the Legends Die, Chapter 14. They put him in a room with Spot Luther's spotted dog. Luther was 14, had been at the school several years, and tried to walk and talk and look like Benny Grayback. He helped Thomas Blackpool put on the stiff new agency pant and shirt and told him to put on the heavy black shoes. Thomas put, on, put one on his foot, then threw them both aside and put on his moccasins again. Luther urged him to lie down on the cot, see how soft it was. Thomas felt of it, then tore the bed apart and arranged the blankets in a pallet on the floor. Luther shrugged and said, I will tell you about the things you must learn, and began to praise the school, the teachers, the classes. Thomas went over and stood at the window, ignoring him. When the supper bell rang, Luther said, Now we go and eat. They went downstairs to the dining room. Thomas made a face at the cooking spell, looked at the boys and girls marching in and taking their places at the tables, and sat down beside Luther, not liking any of it. A plate of food was brought to him. He smelled of it, picked up a piece of meat in his fingers and tasted it, then spat it out. Luther asked what was wrong. He said, It stinks and got up and left the table and went out of the room. Benny Grayback had been watching him. He followed Thomas outside and across the grounds to the horse-breaking pen. He caught up with him at the gate and asked, Where are you going? Thomas didn't answer. He opened the gate, and the bear cub ran toward him, was snubbed by the chain and jerked from its feet. Benny caught the boy by the shoulder before he could run to the bear, which was bawling and snapping at the chain. The boy struggled to get away. I am going back to my lodge, he shouted. No, Benny said, you are staying here. He pinioned the boy's arms. I shall take my brother and go. The boy bit Benny's hand. Benny slapped him and shook him, then closed the gate and tried to haul him back toward the dormitories. You are an evil person, the boy cried and tried again to wrench free. I hate you. My brother hates you. But Betty twisted his arms behind him and forced him into submission. They went back to the dormitory and up to the room. Benny made him sit down and he talked to him, told him he must stay here, go to classes, learn to live the new way. He talked and the boys sat in defiant silence. And finally, Luther's spotted dog came upstairs from supper. Benny said, Thomas is to stay here in this room until breakfast time tomorrow. Do you understand? I will hold you responsible for him. Luther looked at Thomas, dubious, but he said yes. Then Benny left the hill, left the room, and went to find Neil Swanson, the square-faced Dane who was in charge of the stables and the livestock. I want to secure the bear, Benny told Neil, so nobody can let it loose unless I say so. We will lock him up, Neil said, and he found two padlocks. Then he took a rope, and they went to the breaking pen. Neil lassoed the bear, choked it in submission, and they padlocked the chain around its neck and to the snubbing post. Benny pocketed the keys in the padlocks. The next morning, when they came down to breakfast, Luther's spotted dog had three long scratches down his face and a bruise that, was almost, that almost closed his right eye. Thomas walked with a limp and his wrists were raw. Benny went to the table where they sat and said to Luther in English, You had a hard time last night. It was a bad night, Luther said. He would have killed me. I had to tie him up. I did not sleep. Bring him to my class after breakfast, Benny ordered. The food came. Thomas smelled the sausage and pancakes and pushed the plate aside. He started to leave the table, but Luther caught him by the arm and forced him back into his chair. And he sat in angry silence till the meal was over. Then Luther took him to the carpenter shop. There were 15 boys in the class. Benny introduced Thomas Blackpool to them, and Thomas stared at them coldly. The class began, and Thomas went to a window and stood with his back to the room. Two boys whispered in an oot about his braids. One of them took two long shavings and hung them behind his ears. All the boys laughed except Luther Spotted Dog. Benny told them to be quiet, then someone whined like a bear, and they laughed also. A boy near Thomas said in falsetto, My name is Bear Meat. And without a word, Thomas turned on him, picked up a wooden mallet from the nearest bench, and flung it. The boy dodged the mallet, clattered the length of the room. Stop it, Benny ordered. All of you, get back to work. He took Thomas by the arm and led him back to his desk in the corner of the room. Why did you do that? He demanded an oot. Thomas did not answer. These boys want to be your friends. Don't you know that? Don't you want to have friends? I have no friends here. That is no way to make friends by trying to hurt them, but it was no use. Benny kept him beside his desk until the class ended. Then he took him to Rowena Ellis. 
Rowena Ellis taught English and was in charge of the girls' dormitory. Unmarried, in her 40s, a slightly plump woman who wore her graying hair and braids around her head. She was unofficial mother to every shy, homesick boy and girl in the school. She had taught in the reservation schools almost 20 years and spoke several Indian tongues, including Oot. She told Betty the agent had spoken to her about this boy, then dismissed him with a gesture. To the boy, she said in the tongue, we should know each other. There are many new things here. This place is full of strangeness. I will tell you about it. Her oot was not precise, but he understood what she said. I came here, he told her, to tell of the old ways of my people. I want to hear of the old ways, she said, but first I must tell you of the new ways. She started to tell why he must go to school, but he cut her off. I do not need these things, he said. She smiled. She was a patient woman. Then her next class filed into the room. It was a mixed class of boys and girls. Two of the boys had been in the carpentry class. When all had taken their seats, Mrs. Ellis said, you, We have a new boy, Thomas Blackpool. He has had a very interesting life, and soon he will tell us about it. But first we are going to teach him more English. We will start today with a review lesson and oral drill. Two of the boys groaned, and several girls giggled. Miss Ellis turned to a simple lesson, saying first a word in oot, then calling on someone in the class for the English word. The class was restless. They had been through this long before. The boys began to whisper. Miss Ellis silenced them, and the girls giggled again. But she kept them at the vocabulary drill for half the period before she told them to open their readers and called on them in turn to read aloud. Thomas Blackpool, bored by it all, went to a window and stood with his back to the room until the class was over. Then Miss Ellis went to him and said, You see, it is not so hard to learn new things. You learn something today. I know this. I do not need these things, Thomas said. Your mother would tell you to learn these things. My mother, and he made the cutoff sign. Tell me about your mother, Thomas. You would not understand. Who else do you have? I have my brother. Tell me about your brother. He turned away from her and left the classroom. Benny Grayback was waiting outside the door. The boy pushed past him and hurried down the hallway and outside. Benny followed. He went to the breaking pen, opened the gate, and ran to the bear. He talked, and the bear whined, and he tried to loosen the chain. He found the padlocks, examined them, then tore at them angrily with his fingers. At last he gave up and stood in silence while the bear licked his hands. Then he went slowly, deliberately, to Benny Grayback, who was waiting at the gate. He stopped in front of Benny and said, I will do these things you tell me to do if you will let my brother loose. I'm glad to hear this, Benny said, but we cannot have this bear running loose and hurting people. He will not hurt people. He will live with me where I live. Luther Spotted Dog would not be happy with a bear living in his room. Luther Spotted Dog can live in another place. Come, it is time to eat. We will talk of this later. So Thomas Blackpool went with Benny to the dining room, and Benny put Thomas beside him at his own table. Hungry, Thomas ate two portions of meat, nothing else. When the meal was over, he said to Benny, Now we will talk about my brother. Tomorrow we will talk, Benny said. I am busy this afternoon. I will go to the place where I live, Thomas said, until we will talk. To your room? Yes, then we will talk about this thing. If you will go to your room and stay there until I come, we will talk. So Thomas went to the room he shared with Luther Spotted Dog. Luther did not return to the room until late afternoon, after his last class. He opened the door and saw all of his belongings piled in one corner. Thomas was standing at the window. He turned and said to Luther, Take your things and get out of here. No, Luther said, this is my room. Without another word, Thomas attacked him, drove him from the room, and threw all his belongings into the hall. Then he closed the door. Luther hurried away and found Benny Grayback. They came back, and together they forced open the door. What does this mean? Benny demanded of Thomas. He does not live here any more, Thomas said, pointing to Luth at Luther. Now there is room here for my brother. But you can't do this, Benny exclaimed. It is done. Benny took him by the arm. Come with me. There is another room where you are going to live. First we will talk. We will go to this other room, then we will talk. He took Thomas downstairs and along the hall to a room so small there was space for only a cot and a washstand. It had one small window with bars on the outside, and it was a heavy door with a lock. They went in, and Thomas said, My brother will not like this place. We will not talk about the bear today. 
Benny said firmly. Then I will not stay here. Benny went out and closed the door and locked it. The boy beat on the door with his fist, then began to chant. It was a sorrow song, a song that Benny had never heard because it was the boy's own song. Benny did not want to listen, but he heard, and although he did not want to go although he wanted to go away, he stayed there. Without knowing, he began to hum the chant, then to say its words softly and to sway with its rhythms. It was a song from far back not only in the boy, but in Benny's own people. Its rhythm was his own heartbeat. Then he heard his own humming, his own words, and he forced himself to sop. This, he told himself, was nonsense. It was of the old ways, and the old ways were gone. He hurried away. Benny was still troubled after supper. He went to see the agent. The agent was annoyed. He had enough problems to settle during the day. His evening should be his own, but he listened as Benny told him what just had, what had happened. Finally, the agent said, just as I was afraid, the whole thing came about because of that bear cub. We'll have to get rid of it. That is not easy, Benny said. Nobody can touch the, be touch the bear except the boy. The agent smiled. No one has to touch it to shoot it. Benny Grayback gasped. No, he exclaimed. You cannot kill the bear. Then he clapped his hand over his mouth. The agent frowned. He had worked with these people, lived with them, tried to understand them for 25 years, and there still were things in them that he could not fathom, emotions and superstitions that he couldn't reach. However, even in one like Benny Grayback, who was civilized and educated. I know the feelings about bears, he said, weighing his words, but when one is a troublemaker, you kill it, don't you? Benny nodded. When one makes trouble, this one is making plenty of trouble, isn't it? Benny hesitated. There is trouble, yes, because of the bear. I do not know this, Benny said, falling into the old speech patterns, even though he spoke English. What don't you know? Benny did not answer the question. If you kill the bear, he said, then you will kill the boy. What makes you think that, Benny? My grandmother, Benny glanced at the agent and broke off. The boy's sorrow chant had beaten at him again. He shrugged it away, shrugged away his grandmother and all the old people, the old ways. I know it, he said. That is all. The agent sighed. Very well, Benny. Do the best you can with the boy for another day or two. I've got an idea that old Blue Owl can help us solve this. I'll get in touch with him tomorrow.